Hello, good morning, my name is Purnomo from uh, Semarang, Indonesia. So, <clears throat> okay. Okay, great. So, my most than 10 years career is working just for building, sanitation, and planning. So, a shock and stretches is coming later. Uh, in early 2009, uh, when the uh, SN, SN Cities Climate Re Change Resilience Network coming to Semarang, so um, f I found the uh, shock and stress is working. So with the climate change impact. <laughs> so, <clears throat> and uh, in 2014, uh, the shock and stress is more complicated in 100 RC resilient cities, 100 resilient cities. So because it is not. Uh, shock and stress by climate change but also shock and stress by several things in s everything I mean. um, since last year mid of last year so we also uh, working with another stress we're thinking about biodiversity in in the cities so um, it is something new for me for me myself uh, my personally and my group in uh, Sierra member in Samarang so, uh, we we didn't thinking about uh, biodiversity impact to the uh, development in the city. So this is our city. Um, Semarang is a part of Indonesian city. is in Java Islands. Uh, we have in, in Indonesia we have 489 cities across the cities, and we have and uh, Semarang is part of more popular cities. Ten popular cities. Semarang was number ten, not number one. But it is enough for me. It's good. <laughs> so, um, the urban growth from time to time, uh, you know, the population increasing in the city and uh, uh, some area in the city uh, change becoming uh, urban area from the um, rural area. So there is uh, the picture show how the city changes and how the population be increasing in the city. Um, Semarang is beautiful, I think, so, uh, for, for myself. So, Semarang is coastal area, coastal cities, but in the same time, we also have a uh, hilly uh, up in the upstream. So, and it's very close. Semarang is just only 373 kilometers square, uh, maybe half of Singapore, if, if you're more popular in Singapore. And uh, we have 21 rivers, so you can imagine how the flood really impact in the city and uh, we have to thinking about best planning how the city can be sustainable in 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 that limitation in the uh, natural limitation anything about disaster we have we have some um, flooding tidal um, land subsidence land moving and land uh, uh, sliding we have uh, we don't have any mountain but we have we close with the uh, Volcano, uh, just only three hours from the city, is in, in Yogyakarta, it's to south, in the south side. And sometimes when the uh, volcano eruptions, the impacts also in, in the city. The ash, for example. <coughs> and also the, uh, the transportation cell already started. So, <clears throat> surrounding Semarang, we call uh, greater area Semarang. So cities surrounding the city, we have uh, seven cities surrounding the cities. We call Semarang uh, Kedung Sepur. Kedung Sepur is name of the cities surrounding Semarang. So Kendal, Demak, Ungaran, uh, Purwodadi, and Salatiga. So the population in Kedung Sepur is around six million, small, small, I think. So uh, and in Semarang city is just only one point five million people who uh, has a home in Semarang. <coughs> And uh, what's the major uh, problem in uh, urban biodiversity in Semarang? So the first one is land conversion. I know it's, as uh, my previous presentation uh, explanation is how the Semarang changed from the rural area to urban area, and some areas changing from the natural beyond uh, residential. So, the population growth in some urban area, maybe in, in a, a whole, not a whole area, but uh, some some area in the cities, changings in uh, land uh, land use and land 
and unfortunately like uh, um, developing countries but I think is uh, is is yeah in an Indonesian cities uh, sprawl is our main problem the other one is uh, value behavior and uh, cultural changes <clears throat> So from the rural to, to the urban, so there is some changes in um, uh, cultural, not really cultural, but some um, the habit, I think. The habit from the people surrounding, who, who living in the uh, rural area, changing in urban, uh, in not really considering about the, uh, uh, the environment. For example, lack of knowledge. Um, Everybody want plans, plan the plan, plan the plans, plan the uh, anything. So it is, it is. Uh, but that is not considering how they can plan the originally plan who uh, coming from Semarang, originally from Semarang. So there is introduced a lot of uh, plan coming from another city, another region, uh, come to Semarang. That is not considering about the originally. That, but it's important from Semarang. And for example, another example is uh, nobody wants a uh, snake coming to their houses. It's really scary. But from different uh, perspective, a snake is a um, predator from the mouse, for example. So there is part of how the sanitation in Semarang is decreasing when the changing of the value and the cultures. And uh, the other one is uh, the regulations, so the regulation and policy support. Uh, we have some problem with uh, bird hunting, not for food, but just for fun. So uh, this also our considering how we can balance uh, about the what we have done in the re regulation. Maybe in some area it is already um, awareness by the neighborhood initiative, but in some village not yet have. So there is a, a gap between physical and socioeconomic transformation in. Uh, how we can develop in the city and how we have some problem in the uh, biodiversity environment as well. So <clears throat> the other one is uh, we have some regulation that we can do anything in the city. Uh, dividing is uh, so because we have some provincial government, we have national government, even some, even for example, uh, surface water or, or ground water. In uh, before the 2014, so the ground water is responsible from the city, so we can do anything. We can stop the ground water. We can re, uh, uh, make make a regulation how to uh, to do to, to, uh, with the ground water. But since 2014, it is a province responsibility. And the uh, province government, it is kind of uh, anything about groundwater is general from different cities. So they, yeah, so there is there is our problem, for example. So that's that's why we we we, we have more stresses and sh new, new shock in the uh, regulation in the cities. Um, coastal zone, for example, now uh, coastal zone in before. Uh, new regulation in 2014. All of coastal zone divided into dif different uh, area. So we have some responsibility to how we manage all of the coastal. Now just only on the beach, and afterward we don't have any responsibilities. It's responsibility coming from national government and provincial government. And the other one is uh, how we can connect city with the cities. How we can cooperating uh, between cities to the cities. So uh, the upstream area. Uh, mainly, the problem in the coastal area is coming from the, from, for example, flooding coming not all, not only coming from the dead city, but also coming from the upstream city. So, uh, the cooperation from the city to city it is also responsibility uh, to the government, to the gov uh, to the province government. Um, the other one, the political system. So, uh, is is really. Uh, uncomfortable to uh, speak political. The political system in the city uh, different between my city in another city. So how we can uh, make good communication between city to the city. We have, we, we, we need some uh, 
mediation between city and the city. So there is that's why there is a province government role to make a communic good communication between city and city. It's also uh, our considering. So uh, we're thinking about how the Semarang can be more resilient. It is depending on the city surrounding. So it is Semarang can be more resilient if not the cities, for example, uh, in Kedung Sepur, not doing the things the, the same thing. So we have to, what is it, infectious defiers of resilience to the city, but we need some uh, media for uh, communication that. Uh, planning. <clears throat> so we work in planning. So in in our member cities, among member CROs, all of them are planning. So maybe we, 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 uh, we are not a good plan planner, but we try to make a best planning. Um, our development planning, uh, our development planning, we have uh, kindly different, uh, two kind of different planning is development planning and spatial planning, but development planning should be considering by spatial planning. And uh, the city planning actually should be in line with the national provincial planning. But we have some different time when uh, established that spatial planning from the national, um, provincial, and also uh, city, city planning. So there is also a little bit stresses when we do the planning, the spatial planning. Uh, back to the uh, biodiversity. So what we have been done and what we are trying to do to uh, uh, in in thinking about how we can balance between development and the environment. So uh, we have some problem with the mouse in the cities. And also we have uh, how we can uh, reducing the coastal erosion in the cities. And also how we can uh, <coughs> uh, provide uh, um, food securities in the cities. So the urban farming initiative is using is how to provide uh, the the community can be provided by himself in uh, uh, in, in food securities in food 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 element. So it is a uh, uh, blending between water, fish, and also crops in 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 Thompson. And uh, mangrove rehabilitation is really really important in Semarang uh, because uh, since last. 15 years ago, Semarang's impact by coastal erosion and also and uh, uh, the erosion is more than 15 kil, sorry, but five kilometers uh, from the coastal to the mainland. And uh, mangrove rehabilitation, uh, not only how we can planting mangrove, but also how we can, how the people can be support that mangrove with economic uh, benefit. For example. We have fish resilience in the city, so how not only uh, people and city resilient, but also fish resilience. So how we can uh, put the fish in more resilience in the coastal area, impact by coastal erosion. So it is it is also challenging in in our <coughs> uh, project. The other one is all breeding. So maybe why are you breeding the all? So it is not a Harry Potter or something, but it is important. <laughs> Uh, we have we found some mouse in the paddy rice in the upstream. So, and uh, since the people don't will don't want a snake in that houses, so we have to thinking what kind of predator in in uh, for for the mouse. So we're thinking about uh, owl. So uh, one owl, I think one owl um, can be catch three mouse in the night. So we already release uh, six pair of the mouse of the old building, and then it is significantly reducing the mouse as a, a pest in the, in the in the paddy rice. And also we also uh, uh, using the organic farming in the upstream. <clears throat> so that is, I think, it's just okay. Um, most coastal city in the north impact by dengue fever, um, and it also is really dangerous uh, 
for for the community. So uh, since last year, we're thinking about how we can um, how the people can uh, have information in early warning system in Denji. So we're thinking. We, so we try to implementing try we uh, how the, uh, the system can be worked with, with the community, and uh, it is work. Even it's not really, but I think it can be decrease of the dengue fever in, in Samara. Um, so this is my last presentation, I think. <laughs> Thank you very much. So I will uh, pass to Greg uh, to continue this presentation.